Hello there. I'm Nancy from Black Sheep Knitting in Needham, Massachusetts. Um, we are a local yarn shop in the suburbs of Boston, easily reachable um, from the city and from the other suburbs. Today I thought I would show you some whips that I have, works in progress. As those of you who know me know that I am not a monogamous knitter. Um, and <laughs> at any given time, I have at least three sweaters on the needles and various other things, and some things go into timeout. Um, and I wanted to show some the differences in some of the things that I'm knitting and why I like knitting on them. The first one I have is a sweater from my most recent favorite designer, um, Petite Knits. And this is the Sunday cardigan. I think I've probably shown this before. But I want to show you why I have liked knitting this. This is done in a Rowan yarn called Tweed Haze. And it is a combination of um, mohair, alpaca, and polyamide, polyester, and cotton, of all things. So it's got a lot of stuff in it. And it has these beautiful flecks. Um, but the reason I'm enjoying knitting on this is because it's on a size 10 needle. I don't like knitting um, with needles much uh, bigger than 10s, just because I have a lot of arthritis and it hurts my hands. But what I've loved about this is that it knits up very fast because you're on a 10. Um, the yarn is it's beautifully soft. I'm now on the working on the body, having this is a top-down sweater that um, has a folded over. You fold over the top of this, the ribbing, to make a sort of bulkier, sort of nicer little um, neck on here on the ribbing. And then it gets some buttons, and you don't have to make buttonholes until the end. And somehow, I haven't read further, but somehow you pull these sections apart and make the buttonholes. We'll see about that. I've been considering snaps, as I heard somebody the other day talking about how much they liked snaps on sweaters. Or maybe it won't have anything at all. We shall see. Anyhow, this is a, my sort of quick project that I hope to finish. I wanted to show you some finish pretty soon. Um, but then again, because I'm not a monogamous knitter, if I'd sat down to make it, I think I could have made this in a week, a week and a half. But I'm, you know, shiny object here, shiny object there. I see things. And because um, I have this whole yarn shop full of yarn to choose from and then my stash at home, I'm always wanting to make something else. And so I start things. Anyhow, let me show you the colors that are available in this tweed haze. This is kind of a mossy color with flecks of hot pink in it. This is a gorgeous burnt orange with sort of a black line going through it. I think maybe that's what the cotton is. It's got what this is all spun around. I'm not sure. Flecks of pink in here and other things. This is a gorgeous blue with um, flecks of pink and I think some black in here, a little bit of peachy color. This is a gorgeous gray um, and everybody could use a gray cardigan. I know I have some at home and, I, and I've got one on, but this I did not knit. Um, and this has got flecks of pink and other colors. So that's another one. Here's a mustard color. It's called Setting Sun. But again, flecks of pink, black. So, it, you know, you can wear a lot of different things with these. And this is the color that I'm working on, the navy blue, though it looks black. And then, of course, this beautiful um, aqua turquoise color with also more flecks of stuff in it. So, and there we, of course, in the shop, we have other yarns that you could use for this project. Um, as many of as many have you have seen already, I talked about 
the um, Pink is for Power sweater designed by Melanie Berg. And um, do I have the picture? Gracious. I thought I had the picture here. Hang on just one moment. Here it is. Um, so this um, I decided to do in a cotton that we had in the shop called um, Sammy. And I love it a lot. And the gauge I got with it is actually six stitches to the inch, but it does stretch a little bit. So um, she was recommending a fingering weight, knitting it at six stitches to the inch. I chose to do one size smaller because I really felt that this was going to end up being a lot bigger. Um, on on um, with this yarn because she really does recommend a fingering weight. I think I'm going to get away with it. But one thing I need to tell you, I have to confess, I've pulled this apart three or four times. And in my haste to get this going, I began, you begin with the back, you start here and cast on for the ribbing, and then you do part of the back and you do some short row shaping on either side. So I dutifully, I decided I was doing um, the size one. So I'd gone down a size. So, um, and I did not go through my pattern to um, circle the numbers. Um, so I finished the back and I start on the front. And most of the time when I'm knitting, I'm doing a th the third size over in a pattern. So I started looking at the third size, the numbers for the third size. Got it all, you, you pick up stitches um, here. When you've finished this part of the back, you put this on, um, I put it on a piece of yarn and they're held for later. And then you pick up here, across here, and then you cast on these stitches. And so this is all for the front. Well, first time I did it, the numbers didn't work out. So I pulled it out. I'd gotten maybe this far and something wasn't right. Pulled it out, started again. Did it again and got down into the lace and the numbers weren't right, so I pulled it out again. And only, I think I started it a third time, and only then did I realize that I had been doing the third size for the front instead of the first size. So as you know, I've been knitting for a long time and I knit a lot, but I still make a lot of mistakes. So now I'm on my, I think, fourth try. I've just started the lace on here. And the as I started to say, or what I began with is what I knit and what I like to knit and why. Um, this one I love because I love doing just this simple lace pattern. And it's a very easy, easy lace pattern with a cable in the middle, right, the cables are right there where my finger is. So there are not a lot of them. And it's just one simple three stitch table. Um, so I enjoy that. And then I enjoy the sort of stockinette on the rest of the sweater. So, and I'm, I did mention before that we're doing this as a knit along and if you're around on Friday afternoons we'll be sitting here um, we do a knit along on Friday afternoons anyway it's, we kind of call it finish up Friday which you may have heard me say before um, so but I'll be working on mine on Friday afternoons at 3 so if you want to come in that would be good so I was listening to or watching a podcast and somebody was talking about um, their shawl called Half and Half Triangle Wrap. It's a pearl Soho pattern. And I, of course, remembered that I had started one a while ago. So I thought, I'm going to get that out because I really do love just plain knit. And this is a huge amount of knitting. And the, the podcast I was watching, Ch 
Caddy Jack's Knits. I think she was starting her third or fourth one of these. And she was saying how much she loved it because it was kind of her zen and how she just loved just the process of just knitting and thinking. And I thought, you know, I remember how much I love that kind of knitting. So I've started mine. And I started this yesterday. And um, I just had to rip something out because there was a flaw in the yarn. Um, but it's just simple knitting. And I did this much yesterday because it's just nice to sit not have to think about a thing and just your hands are moving and you can you, you well you can think about things I mean I think about what I want to knit next what is going on in the shop what I want to do I think about my life um, so I thought I really want to finish one of these so this is how I've, how far I've gotten and the yarn I'm using this is my second color so this is the shawl and you can wear it either with this color the one color showing or the other you can flip it around and it's just a big square that gets folded into a triangle um, so the yarn that I'm using I don't have it in the shop at the moment we may get it back but you can use almost anything this is canopy fingering from the fiber company and it's super soft so these are my two colors so half of the triangle one half is this color and one half is that color and it's just my mindless you know, sitting down and not wanting to have to concentrate on a pattern or anything and just that wonderful movement of your needles and just enjoying. Um, one other project, now these, um, I have to confess, are not all the things I have on the needles. I have a few others, um, of which I can't remember what they are at the moment. But I wanted to show you something else that is kind of fun to do. This is a pattern that I've made up and I've knit the, this is the front, this is going to be a little top. And what I did was I found a pattern, a little pattern, um, this is called a daisy stitch and I found it in a stitch book or something. And what I did was I measured uh, my hips or how wide I wanted this little top to be and I did a gauge and so I was getting I think five or five and a half stitches per inch and I multiplied that by the number of inches I wanted this to be which let's say my hips are 40 I don't know what they are um, so I knew that one half of this because I'm doing it in two pieces and maybe with some sleeves, that half of this had to be 20 inches. So if I was getting five and a half stitches to the inch, I multiplied 20 by five and a half, and that was my cast on. So then I knit, I did some garter stitch for the bottom, and then I started a stockinette stitch, and then I added these daisy stitches along the way with some garter in between. Now, I'm on the back, and again, this is another, now it's become a mindless knit, but in the beginning it wasn't. It had a little pattern, something to keep me interested. This is now the back, which has become mindless. It's just making a, making a plain back. These will be joined at the shoulder, right here. I'll decide how much of a neck that I want. And um, I think I'm going to make little sleeves. So what I will do is once these are um, knitted at the shoulders, I will pick up stitches, determine where I want um, the underarm to be. Get out your measuring tape and you can measure that. And um, I'll pick up stitches and make either, depending on how much yarn I have left, I'll make either a small sleeve or a three-quarter length sleeve. And my general rule of thumb is to pick up the stitches, knit a few rows, and then start decreasing. And I decrease two stitches, one on either side of the underarm, about every six to eight rows. And then I'll do that until 
and I've get a course, then I'm going to be trying it on on my arm and measuring to see if that works. And then I'll probably end it maybe with a little garter border. So this is my fun sort of um, making up um, making up a pattern out of a simple, this is a simple rectangle. And you'll see that even this, if you make it wide enough, will make a little bit of a, a capped sleeve here. A little bit will come down and make a sleeve. So you can play around with just, and so this is kind of a fun thing that I like to do. I like to make up stuff. And you could do any kind of pattern in here. I've done other ones like this that are just simple tanks that are just knit. Not, I mean, not just knit. Well, have I done any in garter? I think I've done stockinette um, with them. And you can do either a plain stockinette border at the bottom, or you could add some garter stitches. But it's an easy thing, and it, it doesn't take a lot of yarn. Um, this is a linen blend we have in the shop. Um, yes, Robin has a question. Okay. So if you're doing that and you've sort of made it up and you've got the two pieces yep. and you've seen them at the top yes. and then do you, would you, before you pick up the stitches for the arm, obviously measure, yep. do you seam below first mm. and then pick up in the round? You could do it either way, frankly. Um, I think you could also just, I think my plan was to pick it up without seaming, but to decide where, how far down the armhole would go yeah, once I, yes. And then, then I would make, I would pick up around and then knit the sleeve and then knit the seams and on the side and the sleeve at the same time at the end. Um, Be interesting to see but how that's a good, out. yes. <laughs> so, so Robin, um, wants me to finish this up so she can see it. So <laughs> I better get on the stick. This yarn um, is a yarn we have in the shop, or one that's very similar. I think this version of it was called Indio, and we have it now as, um, go left a little bit, Robin, and right by the hats, but down there. Lino, I think it's called. Oh, this. Yeah, and I think that's essentially the same thing. This is a 100% linen, and the wonderful thing about this yarn is that when, after you wash it, um, you can wash it and throw it in the dryer. It softens up a great deal. So we have it in some other colors. This is kind of a gold, and there's a white, which is great for summer it's to have a white top. and. This is um, kind of a tweedy, charcoal -y black color. And um, this beautiful rust that I love. And a silvery gray. But we have lots of other yarns you could do something like this. And um, I'm always happy to help anybody who wants to venture into some designing. Um, I find it fun, and I like to have something like that going on with all my other projects. So that's kind of it for, I, I could show you multiple other things I have on the needles. Um, I have socks. I always have socks on the needles, um, which is a great thing if you're going to the doctors, you have an appointment, you're going to a baseball game, and you don't want to watch all the game. You could take your, although I don't know how, what kind of bags they let you take in these days. But um, socks are great to have because you can just, they're small, you can pick them up and you can throw them in your purse and um, when you're waiting at the dentist or wherever, you can knit a few rows. Um, I also have, usually have a shawl on the needles and at the moment, I didn't bring it with me, but I have a blanket um, that is fair isle and it's called Rams and Use. I may have shown it at one point or another and Fiola, in the time it's taken me to do one, then I'm not, I'm only about th half or three quarters of the way through. I think Fiola's finishing her second one. So she puts me to shame every time. Um, 
but she's incredibly talented and a wonderfully um, a wonderful knitter and a fast knitter. Um, so I have that on, and that again, Fair Isle is another one of my favorite things to knit because there's interest to it and things change all the time and it's great to see the new patterns come up. So I like to have something like that going and then maybe a shawl and again my socks and I think that could be it. Could that possibly be it for what I have on the needles? I don't know because there's always a little project lurking around in my house. Um, so don't feel bad if you don't finish a anything right away. I don't feel bad because I love knitting, I love yarn, and I love to change things. And I'm, my eyes are always looking around to see what else I can do. I look at Ravelry every day and um, I see things that I put in my favorites. You, there's that button on Ravelry, you can put things in your favorites. And then you can go back and look at them later and decide, you know, do I wanna do that? And then of course we have people come in the shop and show projects they're doing and that makes me also envious and want to do them. Um, so it's okay to have more than one project on your needles. Um, as I tell people very often, don't feel bad if you have a lot of yarn. It's art supplies. And if you were a painter, you'd have lots of paint. I was a potter. I would have at any given time a thousand pounds of clay sitting around. Um, clay, of course, it's good to sit because it ages and it makes it great to work with. Um, but if you think of it as art supplies, there's not a problem with having a lot. Anyway, I hope you have a great week of knitting. Um, stay tuned. Oh, and one great thing that's coming up, I think it's April 30th, I could be wrong, um, is local yarn shop day. So we may have some fun things going on that day. Come and support our local yarn shop. We want us to you want us, I think, to stick around for the long term, so it helps if you shop here or you can shop online on our online store. So um, that's it. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>